Welcome yeah, we to Luke Voices here. Live, even though this is uh, kind of, uh, we're just gathering together, trying to figure things out. Um, we don't know if Chris Sloan might be joining us, um, but uh, we hope so eventually. We have some folks from Oakland, a couple of students from Oakland, um, some people from Okemos, uh, Michigan. I'm going to go round up a few students. I'm at lunch right now. I'm Paul from the Bronx, and uh, we've got a few students from near Baltimore. Maybe you guys want to identify yourselves. And Karen can handle this as well. Our big topic today is like, we're just going to ask you, what if we met like this every week, what would be some of the big questions that we would want to focus on? And then if we can choose one and get some uh, material around, you know, something to read together, what would that big question be? So I think that's our goal for today, is just like talking about what are our big questions. Um, again, I'm Paul and this is Karen Fassenpower. Um, Karen, do you want to introduce us here? Yeah. yeah. We are broadcasting, by the way, folks. Good. So I'm Karen. It's nice to see you all. Um, let's go around and just do introductions and maybe um, Tell us your names and something about your school or something about your community. Um, can we start with the group from Okemos? And make sure you unmute when you're going to talk. OK. Um, hi, guys and gals. Um, this is Emily, Sarah, and Matt. Um, we're, this is our expository writing class. What grade are you in? We are all seniors, I believe. Okay. So tell us something about your school or your community. Anything you want. Uh, it's very, it's very um, diverse, and mm -hmm. I think it's like top ten in the state. Top ten in the state. Not to be braggy, just give me an idea. Is it big? Is it small? Yeah, yeah. It's big. It's big for um, graduating two class thousand? size of like. 300, yeah, 300 a grade. That seems big to me. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that seems yeah. big to other people. You know, I live in um, on the Arizona border, kind of close to Mexico, and it's very remote. And so the schools out here have a class size of like 25. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So for me, that seems huge, but for other places, maybe not. All right. Anything else you guys want to say before we go to Oakland? No, I, th I think we're good. Okay, cool. Welcome. Let's uh, move over to Oakland. Unmute. There you go. Oh, you're uh, good. I'm Ronald. This is Tina. We both uh, seniors. Um, excellent. <laughs> something about our school is uh, it's small. Everyone knows each other. Um, the school size is probably about like 700 to 800. So everyone is kind of close together. Yeah, it's diverse too. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so you so how many kids in your graduating class about? Like two fifty or no. no? Not that many. Oh okay. So it is kind of small. <laughs> you like being in a smaller school? Because that seems small for Oakland to me, no? Yeah, yeah, it's easy. Like it's easier to talk to your teachers mm -hmm. than like you give them like more one on one on one time with the teachers if you need help with anything. So it's like, yeah, it's easier to get around. That's cool. I think of Oakland as being all huge schools. I used to live in Los Angeles, and we had schools there that the the like four thousand kids in a high school. And it's oh. just crazy. Nobody knew anybody. <laughs> you know, it's hard. Yeah, yeah I think Vermont's the uh, smallest high school in Oakland. Yeah. Nice. Anything else you guys want to say about your school or your community? Um, no. No, no. No, really. Okay. All right, cool. Let's move to um, Baltimore. We got a big group there. <laughs> um, I'm Amethyst. This is Gracie, Destiny, Lisa, Isaiah, and there. I'm Julia, this is Jordan, Brooks, and Akil. We're all. We're all. Yeah. And one junior. Talk you know, up a little bit. It's a little bit hard to hear you. Okay. We're all in 10th grade. Yeah. Okay. Except for one. 
<laughs> and uh, we're just beginning some research around uh, prisons, refugees, uh, injustices related to these topics. The prisons, refugees, uh, civil rights and race, and civil rights and LGBT issues. Uh, our school is about 1,400 students, and we're about to get a bell that sends us off to class. <laughs> and then are you staying or you're not staying? Uh, I don't With know. Yeah, maybe, maybe one or two, but I think class comes into this room, so we're okay. Cool. Okay, well, it's nice to meet you, and those topics are really interesting. So, um, Paul said we're going to, hopefully we're going to do this every week, and we're going to talk about big questions. Oh, I think Paul's back with some students. Yeah. So let's do uh, introductions from New York. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> Ezekiel, go ahead and introduce yourself. And where are you from? Hello. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. So I'm, I'm asking. Hi, you my name is Gianna. Oh, you can't be in the I said that name. I'm sorry. Like that. Is that better? Okay, here we go. There, that's better. That's better. Good, okay. good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kiana. I'm from New York. <laughs> and um, we are. We, where, what, what's the name of your school? Oh, um, New Directions Secondary okay. School. And. We are here to talk about. Well, we're, we're going to find out. Okay. We don't even know what we're talking about yet. <laughs> so that's, that's what we're talking about. Um, I was thinking about me here. That's what he didn't say. Yeah. Uh, introduce yourself. Ezekiel. My name is Jalen. I'm in the sixth grade. Oh. In the sixth grade, and my school is New Directions. And that's it. Cool. So tell me something about your school or your community. Um, my school, we use computers, like we type all the stuff out on the computer, and we're doing a book name called Tuck Everlasting, and we on, we moving on to 18 through 20 chapters, yeah. Okay. Nice. Is it a big school or small school? Um, big school or small school? Big school. Yeah. You know, Karen, I think that's all relative. Well, we were just talking about that before because um, Okamis was saying they were big, and I said to me, like, anything's big because our schools have, like, 25 kids in the whole grade level. So We have 200, so not big. In a grade level or in the whole school? Whole school. And that's how many grades? It's now 6 through 10. Okay, so that's small. A small even on the scale. But it's nobody here from a huge school, which is interesting. So um, I think we want to explore what... So I was starting to say um, when Sean's class is gone now, is that right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they, were, they had a bell yeah, ringing. He, he was starting to say that they're working on social justice issues around prisons, um, refugees, and something else that I probably forgot. Go the, other two, the other two are civil rights issues for uh, people of color and um, LGBT communities. Great. Okay. So those are some ideas of big topics. Um, when we did, I don't know if probably nobody who's on was with us last year, but when we did this last year, we had a big question, usually for the month, that we always just talked about. And it's just basically you guys talking about whatever you want to talk about. But last year we had um, from from some group, they, they had a big question that they put out that we used. And we were thinking that this year we might have you guys come up with what's the big questions you want to talk about. So does anybody have ideas about <laughs> either topics or big questions, either from the list that Sean gave? Like are those topics that are of interest to you? Or are there other things that you're exploring or things in your community that are compelling that you want to talk about? You can speak up. Um, but not yeah. uh, um, I think a topic should be about the school educational system. I don't know what else you think would be. I mean, it's appropriate, but you think it would be something. Okay, to talk about Talk to you in the okay. there. Um, don't you think every year that we progress in a grade level, 
they always make it harder. Do anybody have a sibling? 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 Seriously, like I have a little brother. He's nine years old, and he is in the fourth grade right now. And right now they're doing uh, multiplications and additions and everything. But they, I feel like they're making the. What do you say? You can say uh, just. Hmm. They're making the standards harder? Yeah, standards and the strategies to okay. really con grasp the concept of knowing how to multiply and, add, and um, add and subtract. So I feel like I want to know why are they making it harder every year for children. So Karen, can I suggest that we just keep throwing ideas out for a while? Yeah, let's do wow. that. Let's just brainstorm. And I'll kind of keep a list and then we can see where we go. So I'm interested in what other people think about that school topic. And um, some of the students in Oakland have been doing some really interesting writing around letters to people in the school administration. And I don't know if you guys were doing that, but I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. OK, so uh, this year we got all new administration new principals, vice principals, new teachers, security guards, and they're bringing in new rules that we don't kind of agree with. So we're just trying to voice our opinion and get our voices heard. And they're not really buying into it, trying to just like, yeah, ignoring us. So we got to do whatever, not whatever we have to do to get our voices heard, but we felt like that was a good way to do that. So did they read your letters? Because I read a lot of your letters. I thought they were amazing. And I wondered, like, what happened to them? Did they get sent to them, or did they read them, or what happened? Don't know. Mm -hmm. I doubt that they've read our letters, but, like, I hope they do sometime soon because a lot of these rules are, like, kind of ridiculous. We, we don't really – we just don't agree with it, and it doesn't kind of – it doesn't really make sense to us. But so far, you haven't heard anything back. No. Okay. Okay. Interesting. We're hoping for feedback soon, though. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, could I, could I add? I mean, the most re sorry, hi. The most recent stuff the uh, Oakland kids have put up. I think it's the Oakland kids. What school are you guys from? Fremont. Oh, so maybe the other one. Maybe the media school. I don't know. Anyway. There are other things coming up. Oh, there's Academy. different. Uh, we're there's split into three academies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So never mind on that. <laughs> Okamas, do you guys have some topics or ideas? Uh, well, we were wondering, like, from the Oakland School, like, what types of rules, um, like, your administration put in place that, like, you didn't really like, and, like, what, you know? So, <coughs> one second. Sorry, there's a nap right now. Attention, ladies, if you're interested in playing Wow. Sorry, you guys. No worries. Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, no, hold on. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. The voice sounded not like ours. <laughs> While we're waiting for announcements, if anybody's watching this but not on the video and wants to chat, there's some Okama students in the chat at youthvoices.net slash live. Okay, so Okama's had a question for, for Oakland about what were the issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you guys hear us? Yeah. 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 All right, so a big, a big thing we have a problem with is electronics so we usually use electronics for everything in class to like help us with our work and things like that but the administration is coming down on us hard about that like we can't use it at all on campus not even at lunch or past yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, so basically right when it hits 
we can't to. use our phone until 3.15. Yeah. Today, and another big Friday. thing is, like, we don't have off-campus lunch, and the lunches here is kind of terrible. And we had a, a a vending truck who used to come every day last year, an ice cream truck, but they kicked them off the premises. And, ooh. So, Not everybody's stuck yeah. with Terrible food. food. <laughs> oh yeah, and like at lunches we can't go into the halls to talk to our teachers and we have yeah. a limited amount of bathroom the bathrooms that are open. Oh my god. <laughs> are these all new? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. You would be upset too. Yeah. yeah. So it's like we're it's, it's, we can go on and on, but those are some of the big things we had a problem with. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. I think I would have written some uh, some pretty strongly worded letters too. <laughs> and uh, we have like so. Our schedule, we have eight classes. So we do one through four on Mondays and Thursdays. And then five through eight, there's Tuesdays and Fridays. And we have one through eight on Wednesdays. So we have each class three times a week. And it's not, it doesn't, it's kind of hard asking all those classes throughout the week. So, yeah. And it's like they change the schedule every year, so it's yeah. like a different schedule every year that you have to get used to. Yeah, and we recently, probably about three weeks ago, just got a 12th grade counselor. So all of our schedules were mixed up. Me, I was going to the wrong seventh period until last Friday, so I had an <laughs> actual class I had. Yeah, because so we had only of, one counselor that was dealing with all the students yeah. here. Yeah. So. so it was like... She kind of messed up our schedules, and like our report cards came out, and like all the classes were wrong from the schedule that we got, so everything was like mixed up. Wow. But that's the first time we've ever had that problem. Okay. I, I'm gonna take a risk. Hey, it's Paul here. I'm, I'm gonna ask a question. Uh, so. Do you think there's any connection between the kinds of things you're talking about, which kind of sound like school and bureaucracy and stuff like that, and um, and what Kiana brought up earlier about? Yeah, actually, because things have gotten like really strict around here, hard for all of us. So I I kind of I can I can relate to her. So I mean, like this. Yeah, I can relate to her topic. Do you feel like it's necessary for everything to just avert from different, like, do you think it's okay that we change around, like, the different types of strategies? Like, do you think it's beneficial? Do you think it's better? Do you think it's like, it really helps, like, to get, like, a head start? Do you think it's, like, better for them to, like, make it harder? No, they, they feel like they're preparing us for the next level, but on the next level, we're going to be mature enough to do what we have to do, and we're going to be independent, so why not treat us like young adults rather than treat us like little kids? That's what we feel. Mm -hmm. like we, have no, we have no voice in the school, and we feel like that's a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can definitely relate to what you were talking about with your younger sibling and like the different types of homework like they have. I have three younger siblings and um, two of them are still in elementary school and they get worksheets like every day that I can't help them with because they're using math that I've never used. And so there's no way that I can help them and in my life and you know where I am so far I haven't had to use what they're using. So I think like sometimes rules and changing strategies makes it more difficult to adapt where like in college we're gonna have technology, we're gonna have like the use of our phones and computers, and so the fact that they aren't letting you use them like in school is not preparing you for the next level. Yeah. You know, it's just not helping you use them to the best of their advantage. Exactly. 
How do you start from really voicing your opinion and really bringing this into like a serious matter? Do you think it's worthy of a serious matter, or do you think it's okay? I'm not sure. <coughs> no, we don't think it's okay. Like, we we feel like they're in the wrong for having all new administration come and change the environment that we've had for the past three years. So we feel like I don't know. And huh? it's, we, we've had issues this whole year with the administration and teachers leaving. Oh, and another thing is that we get suspended easily. Like, say if you argue with an administrator, they will suspend us like for at least three days or so. And then the second time you get suspended, you get expelled. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to like, well, us students are trying to like change that. So at least the upcoming seniors and the other underclassmen will have to go through that. Yes. So I'm hearing student voice, right? So far, if I could summarize that, student voice as a. Um, how, how to raise student voice, but then, like, what are the subtopics? It sounds like electronics is one of the subtopics, but standards and, and like, could you keep on daddy teaching? If, if there was more student voice, so here's the question. If there were more student voice, what would be the issues that students would be talking about and trying to have some action on? I mean, you also just brought up expulsion or suspension and discipline, right? But, yeah. Um, another thing we have is we, we're we not having consistent teachers. So we had our American government teacher left after two weeks, and that's a class that we need in order to graduate. So we had, we were without a teacher for three to three or four weeks, and we just, we just recently got one. And he's not such, he's not one of the best teachers. Like he really don't teach us anything, but just look at us and send us out. He he expects us to. to know. That's how sometimes I feel about this teacher here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you feel comfortable enough to just say that with him there. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm interested. How important do you think your teachers are to what you learn? Um, they're actually. I'm not gonna get no education. But could you get an education yourself without a teacher? No. Maybe sometimes better. No. I mean, we feel we feel like our teacher holds the key. Holds the like. We feel like the teacher kind of holds our future in their hands because mm -hmm. if we go into college next year not knowing what we're supposed to know, we're going to fail and flunk out of well, We're going to fail in college. So we feel like if we don't have a teacher who's, who's trying to help, actually like wanting to help us, then they shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And we feel like that's how a few of our teachers are here. Who, who just here for the check? We feel like they have no connection with the students whatsoever. We feel like that's a problem. Yeah. Um, like more nonchalant. What is is like you feel like trying to be a cool teacher and not trying to make it more serious? Is not that even that. Like he came in last week, and only thing we've done in that class was we've done one do now, and we colored pictures. We like in a make, government class. We make pictures up in magazines and stuff describing us. But like we really don't really do nothing. We don't but it's hard because our freshman year we started off with like a lot of good teachers. But then when it what I think when it came to our sophomore and junior year, a lot of the teachers uh, got laid off so we had to start with a lot of new staff. Yeah. 
I understand. Um, I feel like it's being in every school system. Even over here, it's not teachers necessarily, but it's staff members. You know, staff members is not the most, you know, uh, what do you say, you call it professional. They're not really being professional, like they. Yeah. Oh, very good. So it's just like they need extras. So it's like, I could understand, I totally understand what you guys are talking about. And I feel like that's a very serious matter that needs to be spoken in no one else. What about you guys? You guys have any, like, any serious issues among your school? Um, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of arguments and fighting. And we're about no peace. That's pretty good. We have yeah. a lot of policies against a lot of discrimination. I think we live right by Michigan State, so we are a little bit of a college town. And so um, a lot of students are like professors' children, and like other people, we're a very like affluent community. So yeah. So so sometimes it's a lot of parents a lot of pressure on the kids. So like we know that like they're gonna be really disappointed if you know whatever happens at school. So so the staff really I feel like doesn't have to necessarily work as hard as they do at other schools to keep people, you know, in line. So I think I don't know, that definitely yeah. is a big part of Oakmas. As far as issues with administration and everything goes are Upper staff and even just the teachers have been pretty consistent at least yeah. the whole time I've been here. Um, we haven't really had issues with uh, overly strict policies. Well, and when we do get them, they get lifted pretty fast. Yeah. A couple years ago, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they actually opened up our uh, electronic policy a lot because they got um, little like laptop device things, like half tablets for all the students. So a lot more open with who can use what and when. Do you guys feel like the pressure is good pressure or does it is it overly It's it's way overdone. <laughs> it's horrible. It's I mean our school because probably in part of with our proximity to Michigan State very much there's a college preparatory vibe behind it. it. A lot of times it feels like you're not getting, you know, an education. Someone who's getting ready to get an education. <laughs> <laughs> so, all in all, I don't have any really serious complaints. Do you guys at Alchemist have a way to, to express yourself when you do have complaints or is there any kind of participation of students in decision making at the school? It's all pretty informal I think. I think all the like staff you can like go up and like talk to them like the principal is always walking around talking to kids. It's very so I mean I think the only voice we have I don't think it's much formal. I think it's just kind of a lot of kids going up to talking to the principal, the vice principal about policy they don't like and then they give their opinions here and there. Yeah. What about other schools? Any like any representation on school committees or school board or anything like that? Yeah. You do? Who wasn't there? Um, excuse me, last year, in the beginning of this year. Yeah. Beginning of this year, they um made plenty of letters and phone calls to houses talking about uh, a really serious decision to switch and transfer to schools about the school, but they didn't really make it known and really state out why. And I guess it was like something secret. To they just keep on saying it's dangerous. But, you know, it was like they was really making a big deal of transferring out of school and any other school and it was going to help you, but they really wasn't really engaging into why the school was <laughs> dangerous. I think the school is good, but like, you know, some teachers get hurt. Maybe early. because um, Taft High School is a really known school for being for the behavior, and it was all in one school. 
the building is really huge. It's really old. Um, and I remember everybody used to talk about the behavior in the educational system in here was, you know, really downhill. But now um, I feel like even that I'm in the school now, everything changed. But then again, it's like they're really making a serious matter about the behavior or whatever the matter is about the school being dangerous. We can relate to you because uh, last year they were trying to close down our school. Mm -hmm. So we all had to gather up and basically protest to, and advocate for our school to stay open. So I feel like this year it's more of a kind of, we have something to prove this year to let them know that it's not what the, this school isn't what they think it was. So we have a lot to prove this year to prove to the Oakland Unified School District that Fremont isn't a bad school. What happened to make it stay open? Like, what things did people do? Um, we had... We had a, like, a meeting where we all met up in the cafeteria, and we had like about like 600 people, like alumni from Fremont, students, and parents' voices to talk and like tell them that... We, well, basically they were trying to, uh, they are convincing, was it students? They were uh, convincing the school board that everything that they were like saying about Fremont was, isn't, was that bad because they were just basically uh, judging Fremont by what happened way in the past. And like another thing is that they didn't even let our principal talk or have his own voice. Mm, a big thing was like for the school board, we hardly ever saw them from my ninth grade to my eleventh grade year. I think they've came up here maybe a handful of times. So we felt like how can they know how the environment up here is if they aren't up here on the regular? Like, we have problems, yeah, every school does, but we feel like it shouldn't be shut down because of those minor problems. Like, all of our problems have been resolved and things like that, so why close it down off minor things? So how do you think they make judgments about the school if they're not there? Like, what, what data are they getting? Well, we had, a, we had an incident with security guards here supposedly put his hands on a kid and it was leaked. But honestly, they couldn't have gotten too much information from that because there wasn't any any evidence that he actually did put his hands on him. He was just picking up for a girl who the kid had sexually harassed. So I don't know. They they feel like Three months of bad school because it's bad. It's in a not so good neighborhood. We have a lot of minority here, so they feel like they should close it down and change it to a charter school so we can have, so we can better the community. Some some something like this. Okay. Uh huh. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like at least my folks need to move on soon. If you guys want to keep talking, what's your time frame? When are you finished? Everyone, Alchemist, when are you guys done? Uh, my kids have five more minutes or so. Okay, yeah. So, so can I? I I keep hesitating, but let me not. So. Could we bring some of these issues together around something called the National Student Bill of Rights? So one of the questions I was I was wondering is, do you think you have a right to electronics in your school, for example? Yes. Um, and do you have a right to athletics? Do you have a right to? So there, I think there are 14 if you Google National Student Bill of Rights. And I'm just wondering if that might be a way to kind of think about some of these issues coming together. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm also interested in how big outside pressures are impacting students. Like, that's rarely talked about. You know, we often talk about how it impacts schools and teachers. So, you, know, you brought up, I think, really interesting issues. I just 
And so that's one proposal. Anybody have any other ideas about how to bring some of this together or ideas on that? Well, just, in, that, that yeah. in that context, I'd be interested in talking about what's the difference between a right and a privilege. Mm -hmm. A right and a privilege. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, just quick reactions on that, and and I guess how did how do you think this went, and how do you want it to go next time, if we can meet this way every week? Oh. Well, we feel like this is a good opportunity to to get our voices heard from places all over the world. So, like, maybe if we need help, we can come to you guys for some for your opinions and things like that on what you think we should do to better our school and help us help the younger kids and things like that. Um, I totally agree. That's the right thing because baby steps, but surely, slowly but surely, I feel like these are like serious matters that need to be spoken and known. And it's totally. Alchemist. Um. Yeah. Definitely. We're, we we're all pretty much in agreement here. <laughs> cool. Important stuff to talk about. It affects all of us. Cool There's... So we can agree to meet, and we'll, I think we'll be able to get Salt Lake City in here um, next week as well. But we can agree to meet um, at this time, we hope. And if there are better times, we can talk about it. But let's at least establish this one, and we'll see what else. Is that every Friday at this time? Cool? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks. Nice to meet you all. This was a great conversation. I appreciate everybody being willing to jump in and, and talk. And look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>